with um, who, your name and the today's date. Okay. okay. Do you tell uh, me when? And we're rolling, but we've lost our life a little bit. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay, there we go. There you go. Okay. No, no, that's good. Okay. okay. But let's just keep an eye on it. As the sun changes. Yeah. Well, it, it just it gives you a little, little. Oh, a little help. Gives you a little shine. A little glow. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> okay, so we're rolling and go for it. All right. Can you tell me your name and today's date? Yes, I'm Susan Reynolds, and today's date is oh my goodness, I guess it's June second. And the okay. year? Okay. Nineteen. I mean, I'm twenty, <laughs> twenty thirteen. When, when you're when you're talking, talk directly to Ronnie. Okay. Don't go ahead. look down the camera and don't look over there. Just Shan. she's. Okay, Ronnie's the one. Go yeah. first. Ronnie's the one. Okay, okay, there we go. Want me to start again? No, no, no. You're okay. good. We'll oh gosh. That info. Yeah. Can you tell me the story of why the garden was started? Uh, it's a wonderful story, and it's wonderful to see how it's evolved. Um, in 19, probably. Mm, 89, we, uh, we were at Strawberry Point School and the district approached our faculty about moving back to the Edna McGuire site. And they told us that there was a wonderful Smith & Hawken test garden and that uh, they felt that we probably had a lot to do already as teachers and uh, they didn't think we needed a, a garden and what about asphalting it over to expand the playground? Well. The rest is history. Um, what happened was that uh, on the second faculty meeting, the teachers really stood up to it. Uh, they really took a look and said, wow, what potential, How, what a fabulous learning lab, and it just made such wonderful sense. Teachers bought in, and then the district said, well, let's have a task force. Task force and two CCFs of water and I think, the t I think the district was very surprised that we were a very viable uh, learning center at that time. Can you tell me the names of the teachers that were involved? Well, the entire staff. Um, we were, uh, Judy Cooper was principal, and um, there was just, oh my gosh, that was 25 years ago. Um, anyway, the, the, uh, the teachers that were involved really decided that uh, this made sense. And the garden originally was set up by Smith and Hawken, and I'm not answering your questions right on here, but let me go here first. Mm -hmm. It was a test garden for Smith and Hawken uh, to test exotic tulips. We had no idea what was planted here. And the garden was managed by a board of directors from Green Gulch Farms. And the Green Gulch, uh, and, and they used, or they worked with people who were developmentally uh, challenged adults to teach the marketable skills. And the, some of these people uh, actually worked with the teachers to start off with, and it helped develop the garden. So we moved into a garden with one spigot, and the district, Don O'Connor with the district, really allowed us, put in garden water all the way around the perimeter of the garden. But Smith & Hawken also uh, gave us a, a $1,000 grant for beautiful children's English garden tools and I hope they're still in the, in the closet uh, shed now. Um, but we, this was a whole community. There were, all the people in the neighborhood were very, very enthusiastic about this. And there were people who came, uh, Thelma and Lou Cornish were from the Dahlia Society and they, would, they brought dahlias to plant in a dahlia tree. We also, before school started, came in with pumpkins. And what did you do? I, I understand um, that you do a harvest festival every year. Was mm -hmm. it starting from the beginning you did a harvest festival? Can you tell me a little bit about the different fundraisers and annual festivals and things? Oh, sure. Well, actually, what, it, what started the summer before we moved in, uh, several teachers, um, probably uh, Christy Herman, and anyway, there were teachers as well as people from uh, the Green Gulch area came over and planted pumpkins. We were going to give a pumpkin to each of the children as they, you know, uh, in October, and we realized we had no funding. So what happened is that we realized, okay, here we have the pumpkins, time for a pumpkin sale. So the first week of school, we planted um, lots of spinach. So we had our first, uh, probably in October, we had our first 
harvest sale. And it was pumpkins, spinach, anything that we could get in the garden that was growing. And parents were wonderful and supportive. And they would roll up after school and purchase anything we had. We probably had uh, one or two, in the growing season, we had one or two uh, sales a week, uh, a month. And, and really supported, uh, helped support uh, any of our needs. This PTA was also wonderful. But we started by having a very serious pumpkin sale. And it has evolved. It was not, there weren't any crafts. It was just pure organic matter. And this was, this was very special. Uh, the kids loved harvesting. They loved selling. They loved counting the change. And it was curriculum across the board. It was not only math, it wasn't only science. It was math and art and writing and you name it. Anyway, but that was a way that we got started and the PTA was very supportive. Uh, what specific experiences in the garden and when you were there made your heart sing? Oh, mm -hmm. many, many, many. Uh, I guess I would say one thing that I found very inspiring because I taught third grade and we all played recorders uh, is that we would have a, a, an assembly here in the garden. The entire school would come. The third graders would play their recorders. Everyone would sing inch by inch, row by row, and the Mill Valley song. And it was just wonderful to see that every, the children's love for the garden, the children's wanting to be in the garden. It was a wonderful um, amphitheater for us all. Um, that was, I mean, we just, we would come out here some days and the raptors would be flying over and the children would go, oh, look. And then we'd look for the rodents and the snakes and we'd see the horses racing across uh, the ridge. And it was like, the kids were just mesmerized. I think one of the neatest things was finding three gopher snakes trapped in the bird netting and we had to do surgery on the point. I mean, we had to, the children had to buckle up and hold the snakes and get acquainted with them and then we freed the snakes with scissors. Uh, but we had many, many experiences like that. And open house where the parents were fascinated watching the gophers in the greeting garden. Um, so there were just, there were there were ever so many. Every time we came to the garden, uh, we did art in the garden. I brought my class and we uh, wrote in our journals. We were probably in the, well, we were in the garden every day. And it, I think what is very wonderful is that the teachers really bought into the garden and they had the parents that would come in and help them so that this could all happen logistically. And children spent time in the garden doing any number of things and then would go home and talk to their parents. And one thrilling thing is when you go to the grocery store and you're walking along the produce aisle or the dairy aisle and the parent would stop you, guess what we talked about at the dinner table last night? Suddenly children were aware of seasons they were aware of growing, they were aware of change, and the parents said, you wouldn't believe the discussions. And I don't know how many times that happened. It still happens, and I've been retired about 20 years. <laughs> so uh, there are just so many things. Can you tell me about the book that you brought? Oh, uh, we realized, the staff realized when we, uh, that we needed a guide, that we needed some instruction so um, uh, there was a, 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 oh gosh, what's the technical guy's name? Uh, Kraber uh, helped us with the publishing of this book. And this really helped teachers plan what they did with, their, uh, with the beds. It was a guide for parents so that they could know how to uh, manage with the group in the garden. And it, it it just gave, it was a whole resource. And in here is an article um, of, we were featured in Better Homes and Gardens. There was a four page uh, article. And after that experience, uh, we were invited to come and, and present in Washington, D.C. And no one in the East Coast, this was the first, let me see, I would say it was the um, National Horticulture Society's first international children's garden, la la la, whatever, uh, you know, uh, symposium, thank you very much, <laughs> symposium. And um, they couldn't believe from the slideshow that this was a public school and that, oh my gosh, how did you do this? It was unbelievable. So this, this was sort of a handbook for teachers 
It's been a handbook. Actually, San Francisco has asked to see it because they're uh, becoming involved in their children's gardens. They're, they're not children's. Now, right? They're, they're, just, they're just, starting. just starting. And actually, it's not the school gardens. They're doing this at their um, uh, the uh, botanical society in uh, in Golden Gate Park. So they're they're just beginning where we've been for quite some time. But this really was a nutshell on children uh, learning about tools, what the tools were, what they did with, uh, how to take care of them, how to store them, um, how to clean them. We have a whole cleaning section. Uh, but it was also a science curriculum. We used, uh, at that time, um, not only were we creative in the garden across the curriculum, but we used the garden. Uh, we, we worked with Life Lab out of Santa Cruz, which provided uh, a basis for their science experiments. So when we came out to do composting and we had three five foot high compost piles, well, what happens when you put an egg in the middle of the compost pile? Oh my gosh, Mrs. Reynolds, it's hard boiled. You know, I mean, it was, oh, heat. Oh my goodness, well, what does that mean? So there was just learning across in so many ways. And this is just, I think, and many, I mean, many teachers who were here in the early years, re and, and probably now, and parents understand this too, that it's just, it's a joy to be in the garden, and it's an absolutely limitless inspiration for learning. So it's, it's very, very special. Now that I've gotten off topic. Yeah, it's great. Very good. Is there anything else that, is there anything else that you wanted to get on record, or, you know, that you want to talk about? Okay, we're going through a transition. This is sort of going away, and it's going to be extended. I would mm -hmm. like to hear your comments on that. It's actually going to go from about 19,000 square feet to about 20,000 square mm -hmm. feet, so it is expanding, mm -hmm. but we are def we are losing this yeah. portion. Last, last um, year, I did have the opportunity to work with, uh, come to the architects' uh, meetings, mm -hmm. which I thought were very interesting, and it was interesting to get the architects to take a look at what would be child friendly, what would be user friendly, what would be a situation which would be very comfortable for the children as, uh, as opposed to formal or, or um, overly planned. But anyway, we, had, um, we went to the meetings and discussed this. I'm excited, I mean, uh, of course I'm sad because it's wonderful to come here 25 years later, to come here 25 years later and see how everything has grown up and the plants are lush and it's obviously been the care and involvement of a lot of wonderful parents and, and teachers and, ch and children especially. And so it's, it's, um, it's sad, but you know, it's a new beginning because 25 years ago, it was a new beginning. We were taking the bare bones Smith and Hawkins uh, one spigot garden, uh, no tool shed garden, to uh, to what it is now, and here's an opportunity. It's a wonderful opportunity for the community, parents, teachers, children to get together and really keep this this wonderful garden on the map. Uh, I I think that transitions are always and change is always an experience, a challenge, and I know I know that this is going to just go forward. It, it can't help but do that. Everyone loves it too much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Maybe just in one minute.